Hello senior ones, hope you're doing very well. Today we're going to be covering history following our new curriculum and we're beginning with topic one which talks about finding out about our past. So the key words that you should understand before the end of the topic are past, history and political education. When someone talks about past, what do you get to understand? For example, something that happened yesterday is past. Something that happened three weeks ago is past. So if we talk about the past of Ugandan history, we can talk about the presidents. We have had many presidents up to the current president that we're having right now. And one president, I think everyone of you know, is Idi Amin Dada. You have heard of that person. So when I'm, when I'm talking about Idi Amin Dada, that means I'm talking about him, but then he is in the past president of Uganda. So past, these are the things that are behind us things that happened long time ago, things that happened when we were not maybe born, those are all in our past. So why should we talk about our past in history? When I talk about my past, I can, know my, I can get to know my origin. I can get to know where I came from. I can get to know the background of my parents. So that is, those are the few importances of learning about our past. So now we're going to talk about history. What is history? Uh, you know, you've been yeah, in primary doing social studies and then tell some things of history, some of the previous things, past, a combination of all of those. So now in secondary, it is turned into history. So now what is history? History, first of all, it is a discipline, or you can call it a subject that interprets the past events evolving around man. So now still talking about history. What is history? History is a discipline that records and interprets past events. It records and then interprets past events. Past events involving human beings. Why are we specific talking about human beings? Because also we have history of birds, history of animals, like all animals have their history and many things have their history. So now in our history, our major concern is about human beings. So history is a record that is a discipline that interprets and records past events evolving human beings. That is the definition of what? Of history. Oh, we're not talking about history. We're talking about past events. But then these past events talk about human beings. So now after understanding what history is, we're going to talk about political education. We're going to talk about political education. What is political education? Education. Political education is the formal civic education. Formal civic education reserved for an organized system of schooling. So we have gotten also keywords to know, keywords to understand in political education. One one is civics. We are studying about civics because it is the formal civic education reserved for an organized system of schooling. So now what is civics? Civics is the study is the study of rights. Rights and responsibilities. Of 
a citizen. So now civics is the study of rights and responsibilities of a citizen of a given country. So briefly, that is the meaning of political education. It is the formal civic education. And civics is the study of rights and responsibilities of a citizen. Maybe a citizen of Uganda, because for you are citizens of Uganda. So now civics is a study of rights and responsibilities of citizens of Uganda. What are your rights and what are your responsibilities as a citizen of Uganda? That is all with political education. So now I want to look at political education and history. How are these two related? Why do we have to cover history and political education as one? Do they have something in common or they don't have? That is what we are going to look at. So, first of all, we know history gives a background to political education. Because without history, you cannot have political education. Rather, history gives a background to political education. And you're going to do an assignment for me. You're going to, 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 to show me how these two are related. I've given you one, one way how they are related. I've told you history provides a background to political education. So now you're going to make research and get more ways how history is related to political education now another important thing we have to talk about are the importances of studying history and political education we know history is a study about the past and then we know political education is a study about the civics and we, we've understood civics this is the study of rights and responsibilities of a citizen so now what are the importances of studying these two why do we really have to study history and political education? One, history helps us to understand our origin. It helps us to understand our origin. So all of us, our origin is very important. And without history, we cannot know our origin. Secondly, history helps us to understand, history and political education, they help us to understand our rights and responsibilities as citizens. So they help us to understand our rights and responsibilities. and responsibilities as Ugandans. Because if you don't, if you, you cannot know your right unless someone has told you this and this is your right and this and this is your responsibility. So now political education helps us to understand our rights and responsibilities as citizens of Uganda. That is the importance of studying history and political education. But then there are many importances so I've given you only two. You're going to look for others and then you send in your assignment to our email and I will mark. So thank you very much. This is our first session. Welcome back uh, to our series. We're having another interesting subtopic which talks about sources of history. So as we are finding out about our past, there are various ways, or there are many ways that we use to find out about our past. So these are the sources that we use when we are finding about our past. And they are categorized into three. We're having the primary sources, the secondary sources, and then the scientific sources. So I'm going to first talk about all of them in details. What are primary sources? When I talk about primary sources, what do I mean? So primary sources, these are the sources of history that involve the use of first-hand information. 
first hand information. The first hand information that we have not got the information from one person, but then we have got the information from that exact person rather than not the second person. So primary sources, these are the sources which involve getting information from first hand information. For example, your grandpa, if you want to know about the date and where your mother was born from, if you still have your grandparents, you can go and ask them. So that means you have got information from a first hand, from the, the real, real person who produced the lady. So now you know about everything. And that source would be primary source. It involves getting information from first hand information. So now we're going to look at secondary sources. What are secondary sources? So secondary sources are a combination of primary to get something. For example, uh, after knowing about the date and when my mother was born, I can decide to make a documentary about the origin of my mother. So I'm not the real person, but then I'm making a documentary to talk about my mother. So that would be a secondary source. Why? Because I'm not the exact person who knew the things, but then I've got those things and now I'm combining them to come up with another source. So many people have written books of history, books talking about many things. So many of those books fall under secondary sources because those people didn't have the actual information, but rather they combine sources from primary to form up their books or documentaries. So those are secondary sources. So now we have another type of a source, it is called scientific sources. So with scientific sources, it, is, it involves the use of science to find about something. An example is, we're going to talk about archaeology. When we are using archaeology as a source, it falls under primary and also scientific source. So archaeology involves excavating of the old remains of man to find out about the past of that person. So now in archaeology, we use what they call carbon dating. We use what they call carbon dating. So carbon dating is a scientific method. So because we use carbon dating, which is a scientific method, so archaeology also falls under scientific sources. Sometimes you might find yourself when you want to talk up, when you want to know about maybe the presence of Uganda and to know about Apollo, Milton, or Bote. So you go use you go use your computer and then they'll bring information about Dr. Apollo Milton or Bote. So that means you've used a scientific source. You've used a computer to find about information about someone you wanted to know. So these are the sources of what? History. How's the primary sources? First hand information. Secondary sources. It's a combination. Someone, they can come up with books or documentaries. We also have scientific sources. So this is, it involves the use of what? Of science. So those are the sources of history. But then you also have types of sources of history. So under them, we also have some types. We have some more types. So I'm going to talk about those types. We're having oral sources. When I talk about oral, I think you've all heard about oral. The oral method, orare. So oral means the use of mouth. Use of mouth. Use of mouth. Oral source. It involves the use of mouth.
to explain everything, to talk about, to explain the past of someone when someone is using the use of mouth. Uh, you've all been in the villages and most of you who are very lucky, you've been with your grandparents. They'll tell you some stories that happened long time ago when they were still around. So me, I was really very lucky as being told of, of a war, a story of a war. But then they are really very interesting. So me, my grandpa telling me information by use of mouth, that becomes an oral source. So it falls under here, oral sources. When you get someone, they tell you a story about something using their mouth, that is oral source. Some people can't even sing, you know? When someone sings about history, that means they have used an oral, they have used an oral source. Because singing is oral. Someone is using their mouth to, 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 talk, to talk about what happened a long time ago. We've had, you know those songs of Kadonkam, they always talk about things that happened long time ago when, when we were not around. Those are also examples of oral sources. Written sources is our second source. Written, oh no, write, written, wrote. So written means something which is put down into writing. Uh, when we have something which is in the books, that is written. So written sources are uh, these sources which involve writing of something, doing of something. For example, there is this book. This is a written source. It has some information which is there, but then it falls under written source because it is written down. So written books, written sources, you can have books, you can have documentaries, you can have letters, you can have newspapers, they're all written sources. Then we also have the poems, you might read a poem, find a poem which was written long time ago, but talking about something in the past. Those are written sources. Now having archaeology. Archaeology involves the excavation of the remains of man to find out about their past. So we know that the oldest skull of man was found in Tanzania and at a place they call Odvago. And there is ask you that question in your primary. So the method they used to find about that oldest skull was archaeology. They went, excavated, and then they got that skull, so they made a study about that skull. That is archaeology. So linguistic. Linguistic comes from language. So linguistic is the scientific study of someone's language with an intention of finding out about the past, or finding about the background of that language. An example is, we always talk about the Bantu. Who are the Bantu? Where did they come from? And all, we always say, Bantu are the people who have a common word into in their language. Into in their language. So that means when this people wanted to find out about uh, the Bantu, they, they went and said the language of those people and they realized that in their language, they always have that word into. That's why they called them the Bantu. That is linguistic. And lastly, we have anthropology. So we're having anthropology. What is anthropology? It is anthropology. Anthropology is the study about the culture. We are studying about culture. Culture of a community. Culture of a community. The study of a culture of a community to find about their past. To find out about their past. 
Why do we see anthropology used in history? Uh, you always have what they call organization of societies. How is Buganda Kingdom organized? How was Bunyoro Kingdom organized? How are these organized? So to find to, to get to know about the organization of those kingdoms, those historians use what they call anthropology. They go and live with those people, they study their culture. After studying their culture, they can get to know the organization of the of their the organization of that community. And by doing so, they are found out about their past, what they believe in, where they came from, just simply by studying their culture in that community. Thank you. Let's talk about advantages of using oral source, written source, archaeology, and then linguistic. What are the advantages of using each of the sources and what are the disadvantages of using such sources? First, we are beginning with oral source. Oral source. We're using oral source. Oral source. So, advantage. We know oral source is the ease of mouth. You know, people will come and tell you sweet stories, very interesting. But then sometimes you might find when the grandpa is very old and they might forget something. They'll forget something and then they'll give you a wrong thing. Sometimes they can exaggerate the issues. And they tell you now when they went this and this and yet it was not really very true. So it also involves some lies. People can lie to make the story very interesting. That is a disadvantage. They can lie to make the story very interesting. They can exaggerate issues. You know, they tell you now when they came, they had this and this, and yet it was not very true. So it involves lies and sometimes exaggeration. That is the, dis the disadvantage of using oral history as a source. Then what are the advantages of using this source? One, it is cheap. It is cheap. If you live with your grandpa, you not even pay a coin. You don't have to do anything, but then you just go and tell her, you know, tell me about this. And they'll really tell you. So it is very cheap. It is time costly, like the it saves time. You know, it doesn't involve like you don't you don't need like four hours to go and read a book. You know, you don't need like many years to go and dig up, excavate, then after make research about that something. No, no, no. You just need one hour. Someone will tell you the story of many things in just a simple hour. So it really saves time. That is another advantage of using oral source. So you're going to give me more advantages and disadvantages of using this oral source in finding out about our past. Another source is the written source. What are the advantages and then disadvantages of using this written source the written source we know it involves you know writing books documentaries you can have a newspaper down you can many things which are written down so what are the advantages one advantage when you write a book it can last for a long period of time It can last for a long period of what? Time. It can last for a long period of what? Of time. In case someone maybe forgot about something, you can go back in the books and then you can read that information. And it doesn't really involve many lies. You know, someone cannot really forget to tell you lies. It cannot be exaggerated because it is already written down. 
So this is one of the advantage of using retained sources in finding out about our past. So now, what are the disadvantages of using retained sources? We all know some people have really a problem of reading. People don't really want to read. So one disadvantage of using the written source. Disadvantage of using the written source. One, it is expensive, quite expensive to some people. Some people don't have money to buy books, but then they would want to find about their past, the history, but then they don't have really they don't have money to buy the books. And another one, some people are illiterate, they don't know how to read and write. So written history does not really favor them. Others, you might find someone is really very blind and they cannot see. So still the source cannot favor them. So those are some of the disadvantages. It is expensive. It does not favor those people who are literate, who cannot read and write. And still people who are blind, they cannot use it. That is the disadvantage of using the written sources. So you, you're still going to find out more disadvantages and advantages of using the written sources. We're having archaeology. We said archaeology involves the excavating or digging up of remains of man to find out about their past. So now, one advantage we have, it is very reliable. Very reliable. Very reliable. It always tells the facts. You get the facts. You get true information when you've, you've, you've used this source of archaeology. And still, it can tell us the time when those things happened. It can tell us the exact time when things happened. Some books cannot really tell us when those things happened, but then with archaeology, it can tell us when those things happened. Now the disadvantage is, it is very expensive. It was very expensive to go, you know, you go to Karamoja, you dig up, you don't find something. Then you go somewhere else, you dig up, you don't find anything. Then you go somewhere, you dig, and then you find something, but then still you have to use some other, other means to find out information about that skull you found. So it is really very expensive and it is time cost, it, it assumes a lot of time when you're to use it to find about history about someone so you're still going to find you're still going to find tell me the advantages and disadvantages of using archaeology as a source so the assignments are advantages and disadvantages of using oral history written and archaeology after looking at the sources of history we want to look at what they call historical sites now, when we get to find about information about something, or information about Boganda Kingdom, information about, about the oldest skull of the human being, anything, when we use our sources and then we find out information, we have to keep that information somewhere so that other people can also see and reflect on that info mentioned during their studies and during, during their, their, their research. So that's why now our next topic is historical sites. What are historical sites? Historical sites, these are official places. They're official places. One word we should note. Official places. Official places where pieces of political
of political, military, political, military, and social history. So, he, historical sites, these are official places where pieces of political, military, and social history have been preserved or have been kept due to their cultural importance or due to their importance. So it is an official location where we see those pieces of political, military, and social history kept. An example is Uganda Museum. When you go to the Uganda Museum, you will find artifacts about talking about Uganda Kingdom, you find artifacts talking about Bunyoro, you find artifacts talking about many things that happened in Uganda, which are in the what? In the past. So that that is a historical site because we have we have many things gathered there, but then those things are for uh, are for cultural importance. Now, what are the importances of these historical sites? We've seen some examples of historical sites. In Tanzania, we have Old Vai Gorge. Then we have Fort Jesus. Then we have, in Uganda, we have Bigobi Amgeni. We have the Nero Rock paintings. We also have, in Kenya, we have the Gate Remains. Then we also have the Uganda Museum, the Kasubi Tombs. We have Namgongo, Uganda Matters, Namgongo Shrines. All of those are historical sites. So now after knowing what historical sites are and their examples, what are the importances of these historical sites? What are the importances of these historical sites? One, they are for study purposes. They are for study purposes. Now, after us talking about these historical sites, I can decide to take you to the Uganda Museum. Or you can also go by yourself to the Uganda Museum to go and get to know about many things. So in that way, the Uganda Museum has helped in your studies. When you're talking about the... Kawaka Mwanga, we always talk about the killing of those Uganda matters. So if you want to know about more about them and those each Uganda matter that was killed, you can go to Namgongo and then you learn about them. So in that way, historical sites have really helped you for study purposes. And secondly, they are a source of employment. They are a source of employment. Employment. When you go to any historical site, you'll find many people who are there and they'll tell you the history about something which you found. They'll tell you the history about the place. Those people who always guide you through when you've gone to, to, to visit those places. Those people are employed because of those historical sites. So imagine if they're not there, they wouldn't have been employed. So historical sites are sources of employment. And lastly, lastly we can say historical sites, uh, uh, they give revenue, they provide revenue to the government. They provide revenue to the government. So when, when uh, we always receive visitors or tourists coming from different countries to come and see the, the Uganda matters, to go and see the New York paintings, to come and see many things which are in Uganda. So after seeing those, they'll give some money and that money in return it will provide revenue for the government. Those are some of the benefits of historical sites. But then you can also find more importances because they're not only three, they're many. So I'm going to go and research and then get more importances of historical sites. 
and also look around you earlier and tell me any historical site that you see around you, which is very near. And then you also tell me the features that all the artifacts that you found in those historical sites. Thank you.